everyone, good morning. So our mini lesson today is gonna to focus on nonfiction. Nonfiction books were um, what we were talking about before school got out. So from here until we're done with school this year, we are gonna be talking about nonfiction. Nonfiction is important because it tells us about real topics. We get real information. So before we left, we were writing chapter books and some of the topics were all about cheerleading, how to jump rope, how to bake cupcakes, all about elephants, whatever your topic was, it was a real topic, something that you knew all about. This week we're going to start reading about plants because everything is blooming and growing right now and it's just so nice outside. So we're going to look at some plants and then later for science, Ms. Haltem and Ms. Beck have some really fun activities that they're going to try and do at home and video for you guys so that you can see some of what's going on at their house and what they're trying to grow. It's a much better idea for Ms. Haltem and Ms. Beck to grow things because Ms. Craig does not grow things very well, okay? I'm going to just tell you that. So I'm going to explain it to you and then they're going to show you how to do it later. So let's look at our text. For starters, text is anything that we can read. So this is like a poster board book. It's a great big book. Um, if I was reading a book to you like a read aloud, that's a text. If it's a magazine you get in the mail, that's a text. If it's a newspaper, that's a text. If it's an article on the internet, something that you're reading, that's text. Text is whatever it is that you are reading. This text is nonfiction. So when we read nonfiction text, our goal is to be able to tell what the main idea or the main topic is. That means what something is mostly about. So after we identify the main idea or the main topic, we go back and we list three details. Details are little bits of information or facts. So after I say this is my main topic, I have to say these are my three little bits of information, my three facts, my three details about that topic. So Ms. Craig is going to read this, and then we're going to go back and identify the main idea and our three details. All right, here we go. The first thing I notice on this um, poster is that I have got photographs. I've got some bold words. These words are red, so they must be important. This word is yellow, so it's dark and bold, but it's also highlighted in yellow, so it has to be important. And then I've got some little captions under here that tell me what these are photographs of. It says right here at the top, what do plants need to live? That's a question. What do plants need to live? Plants are living things. We have talked about things that are living and things that are not living. Plants are living. They're growing. They're changing. They're living. They need water, air, space, and light to grow. They cannot live without these things. So let's look down here at our two pictures. Underneath this picture is the word water, and underneath this picture is no water. Water, no water. So obviously this is not a picture of water. This is a big green growing plant. And this is not no water. This is a brown looking plant. So I'm going to make an inference, and I'm going to say Based on the text that I read saying plants need water, air, space, and light to grow, and this is green and lush and growing, and this is like brown and kind of dead looking, I'm going to say that this is a plant that's had water, and this is a plant that's not had any water. And so that's why they look very different, because if it says up here they need that to grow, this one must not have gotten any water or enough water, and that's why it looks like this. So let's go over here. Plants use water, air, and light to make their own food. When they make food, they give off oxygen. Oxygen is the word that is highlighted in yellow and looks bold. People and animals use this oxygen to breathe. So that's why oxygen is so important. That's why plants are so important. We've got to have them to make oxygen for us so that we can breathe. So down here looking at this plant, this one says light, and this one says no light. Light, no light. So if they need 
water, light, space, air, light. This one must not have gotten enough light and that's why it's not growing. It must have been too dark. And if I look here in the photograph, these blinds are closed. And this looks like a window in the background. So this plant must be sitting near a window where it's getting light. This plant is not getting enough light. So it's not going to grow. So I'm thinking about the main idea. What is this mostly about? So it's telling me plants need water, air, space, and light. Um, when they get these things, they make their own food. So I think the main idea is what plants need. So I'm going to put right here at the top, main idea, our plants' needs. This is what they need to, to grow and to flourish and to turn into healthy plants. That's what this is mostly about, plants' needs. Now, I need to go back and get three bits of information or three little details about this plants' needs. So... Looking back, I remember this picture was said water and this one said no water. So this told me that they need water to live. So I'm going to use that as one of my details. Plants need water. Okay. And then this picture said light and no light. So that was a detail I remember. Plants need light to grow. So I'm going to put plants need light. One more. One detail, two details, need one more. I like this bold word here. I like oxygen. So I'm going to write a sticky note that says plants give off oxygen because I think that was a really good fact. It was a really good little bit of information for me to remember. So my main idea is that plants have needs, and my three details are they need water, they need light, they give off oxygen. You might see three more details that you could say, Miss Craig, they also, it also said that people and animals use oxygen. It also said that plants need um, space to grow. It also said that plants are living things. All these things are details. So you don't have to have the same three details Miss Craig has, but you need to be careful because what happens a lot of times is when we're reading and we're working together, you guys have background knowledge. And you know things. You have you might have gardens, or your moms might grow plants at your house, or you might have seen some plants grow outside your window at school. You might already have background knowledge about this topic. But what happens is when we have background knowledge about a topic, we bring it into our reading, which is great. But then you might say, I know this about plants, and use that as a detail. What's important to remember is that our details have to come from the text that we're reading. That's not where, we're, where we bring our background knowledge. Background knowledge is in our brain to help us understand our reading better. Like Miss Craig has some background knowledge with plants that die because they don't get enough light because I am not good at keeping plants inside my house alive. I will let those jokers die every time because I don't think that... I don't realize that they're not getting enough light, and I accidentally let them die. That's background knowledge I have. But I can't write on a sticky note, Miss Craig kills plants because she doesn't give them enough light. Because that's not information from this text. So you have to be careful to keep your background knowledge separate. It's great information, but it's not what's coming from the text. You need to stick directly to your text, okay? We do that a lot in first grade because we just know so many things which is awesome. You guys are so smart. But when we're looking for main ideas and details, they come from the text that you're reading. Let's look at another page. Ooh. So this says cold place. This says dry hot place. And this says wet place. Interesting. These are three very different places. This one's got water in the bottom of the photograph. This one has got cactuses. I know a lot about cactuses, and I know I'm not saying that word probably the right way, but it's okay. And it's got all kinds of prickly plants and mountains, and it looks to me like it's in a desert. That's my background knowledge. Didn't read anything about that yet. That's what I think. And then this um, looks like 
Miss Craig and Mr. Craig, when we got married, we went to visit in Canada. And this is what it looks like. Yeah, these great big snowy mountains. And it's beautiful there. And it's really cold. So this looks like somewhere in the mountains where they're great big and beautiful. And then it had all this lush green stuff grown underneath it. And it was gorgeous. But that's my background knowledge. That's not anything I've read yet. So I can't use that as a detail. I'm just um, keeping that in my little brain to help me when I'm reading. So let me go back here and read what it says. You can find plants almost everywhere. Plants grow where they get what they need to live. In the previous page, page, we read about what they need to live. And it says here that plants grow where they get what they need to live. So as long as they're getting what they need to live, they can grow about anywhere. Plants have things that help them live. A cactus has spines that help it live in hot, dry places. So I'm going to hold my finger here in my reading, and I'm going to point to this picture again because I was thinking a minute ago that this was a cactus and that it was in a desert. Deserts are dry places, so I guess that's why it has those spikes. They help it live in a cold, dry place. Some trees have special roots that help them live in wet places. So this is one of those really wet places where the water comes up the trees and not every plant is going to be able to grow there. So they've got to have special roots that help them grow here. So when I look back at the photograph, Mr. Craig is looking at me. When I look back at the photograph and it says wet place, um, I understand that's why the text is telling me this place is wet because these plants grow here specially. They've got special root systems that help them stay here. Not every plant could grow there. So on this page, if I'm looking for the main idea or what the text is mostly about, you can find plants almost everywhere. Plants grow where they get what they need. This is a cold place. This is a dry place. This is a wet place. So we're talking about the places that plants grow. So I'm going to write that on my sticky note. Main idea. Places. Plants. Grow. Now I'm going to stick my main idea right here. Now I need three details. I need three little bits of information that support what it is I read. So, even if I just wanted to use what I know about these three photographs, those are three details right there. They can grow in a cold place, a hot place, and a wet place. Those would be three different details, but I'm going to look a little bit deeper and see what I can find. Mr. Craig is chiming in the background. What did you say? What about a dry place, like a desert? That's what we're looking at, a desert. He's not paying attention to the lesson, friends. Oh. It says, plants have things that help them live. They're going to grow where they get what they need to live. So, a cactus has spines that help it live in hot, dry places. So, I'm going to write cactus grow in dry places. So, I'm going to put that right here next to my picture of a cactus. Um, on this picture where this place is wet, what we learned was that some trees have special roots to help them grow there. So I'm going to write some trees have special roots. So I'm going to put that right here. Need one more detail from the text, from what I've read. Let's see. Plants grow where they get what they need to live. Plants have things that help them live. So I'm going to write down that plants grow almost everywhere because the text says as long as they have what they need, they can grow. So it says plants grow almost everywhere. And that is detail number three. Okay? So I want you guys to really work hard on your reading. 
know that we're not in school and it's very easy to not do your reading and not spend your time focusing on that, but I would really like you to give it your best effort and try and read a little bit every day, just like when we do when we're in school. We find a great spot for reading where we're not distracted, where there's no noise, the TV's not going because if I sit down on the couch and the TV's on, I'm watching TV. So I'm not going to put the TV on. I'm not going to sit um, in the middle of the dining room where people are in and out the side door distracting me. Maybe you're going to go in your room and sit in your bed. Wherever you've got a quiet spot for just a few minutes, even if it's not long, I want you to do your best to try and find a good, a good reading spot where you can focus and try and do a little bit of reading every day. Okay, that would make Miss Craig and all of your other teachers really happy if you could do that for us. And we have sent you guys some books, so you've got something to practice with. I'm going to pop back on later and do a little bit of word work for you, with you, and then um, maybe read a book. So I will be back in a little bit.